Okay, so this is part two of the courting. I am so sorry. The first time I filmed this, it actually got corrupted. And so I had to wait for another piece that was going to be similarly finished for part two. But I was sent this one to finish and it is very similar to the first one. So we can go ahead and get started. Okay, so kind of where we left off from the first one was we have our cording all pinned where we want it and then we're just going to make sure that we are sewing in the direction of the cording. So as you guys can see, the cording is slanted this way. So what we're going to do is go through the needle point and come back with our needle slanted the same way into the front all the way through not taking any of the cording and then back through now for going through we have two options so you will see both of that so for, to start we're just going to go straight through the front of our piece go all the way through and pick just a little bit of the backing fabric trying to come out at the same spot on the fabric all the way and for the first knot, I don't typically pull too hard because it will pull through the canvas. So I just pull it in to keep it and then this stays pretty loose, but that's okay because we will come back through in a bit. And then typically what I'll do now, uh, you can do it two different ways. You can either go over the cording and you're gonna try and go between two colors or you can go directly through the cording and you're going to try to go through the cording between two colors. So if I go through there, you can see where I'm coming out. It's right between the two colors there and that will make it really secure. So I'm just gonna pull that all the way through and you see what I mean about the first knot being loose. So I'm going to start over because unfortunately it pulled all the way through. Um, more of an issue for larger mesh canvases. For 18 it does tend to stay, especially if it's like an 18 mesh with a full coverage. But if it's, let's say like 13 mesh and it's an open stitch, then typically the knot will not be big enough to keep it on its own, so typically I'll do like a few stitches. But again, I'm just gonna go through the front, straight through, pick a little bit of the fabric in the back and pull it through. Okay, and what I'm actually gonna do this time is just add a clip to it to keep it from pulling much more okay and then to start I'm just going to wrap my cording around for this one just to kind of get it started I want it to get to a point where it feels a little bit more secure and then I'll start pulling really tight and I know you guys are like well isn't there gonna be a gap there so there's not because what I'll do is I'll stitch all the way around and then when I get back to the starting section I'll stitch it again once the thread is secure so I'll probably do one more loose one just to keep it safe and then we'll start pulling pretty tightly. Okay. So now that I think it is in there pretty tightly, we're gonna pull it and then add a clip or you can use your fingers, but essentially you just wanna pinch the two sides of your cookies together because if they aren't pinched together your cording will kind of sit in between and you're not going to get that nice flush level look but if they're pinched together then the cording can't go in between it's going to sit nice on top so it's going to be the difference between having cording that maybe looks like that or having cording that sits nice on top Okay, so then there are two ways you can sew. So you can go either between two colors of your cording, 
like I just did. And you're gonna go right back in where the color you go through meets the canvas. So I came between the green and the white, so I'm gonna go back in around where this white touches. And you're gonna go through the front of the canvas, through the back cookie, not touching any of the cording. And then on our loop forward, this is now where you can either go through the cording or easier is just to wrap over going between two colors, making sure to go back in where the two colors meet. And on the back, we're just gonna try and get more fabric around the same place. So as I'm getting my fabric, I'm trying to get it right where this pink line meets, so that way it will be nice and straight all the way through. Okay, so Pros and cons, I think going over is a little bit faster. You just have to be very careful to make sure that you are entering right where the cording touches back. So if let's say I, instead of entering here, I enter there, it can give my cording kind of like a weird dimple. But I do think it is faster. So again, you're just going to go between the two colors hold it and then through the front, go back in around the two and then you're gonna kind of slant it as you go through. And so that ensures that you continue to move forward because if you go straight, you're never going to be able to really move forward with your stitching. And again, we're just going to get some of this fabric around the same spot where we got the last one and make sure to pull it tight. And then as I get close to these places that have pins, I'll go ahead and take them out. Go over. Um, I will say if you go between the colors of your cording instead of over, it does give you more flexibility if you want to kind of move your cording around. So let's say you have a piece that is really tricky and you need the cording to sit more forward for some reason. So. For instance, those um, Stitch It sweaters for the armpits, you can't really get your cording to sit flush in the armpit because there's not enough space for it. So typically what you'll do is sew your cording on a little bit more forward so that way you can make sure that the arch is there. So in that instance, I would recommend using this method where you're going through the two colors because you can have a lot more flexibility about where that final cording will sit. Whereas if you go over the colors, it is just going to kind of stay in that one place. Okay. However, this one is pretty simple. I don't think it needs to be too complicated, so I'm actually just going to use the over cording method. And I'm just kind of moving my clip as I go, making sure that it stays nice and tight. So I am going to keep repeating this method until I get to where I started. And that is when we'll do something different, but otherwise it's just going to be several minutes of me sewing. So you can watch, um, if you're finishing your own stuff, you can definitely sew along. If not, feel free to pass forward. Um, I'll try to make like a quick pause or something before we do the next step that's not sewing. Okay, pull it over between the two colors. And you know, there's really more than one correct way to do something. So for instance, with the lacing, I really like to 
do it, you know, where I cut the tabs and I lace it with the tab on the opposite side. Some people like to just make a giant circle and pull it through and have the canvas kind of squish together. That's perfectly fine. There's definitely more than one way you can do something. Um, everyone has their preferences and ultimately you should do what you find is the easiest. So if you find that going over your cording is easier for you and it gives you the results you like best, go for it. If you find that going in between the cording gives you the results you like the best, do that as well. Again, there is no wrong way to do it. As long as you are trying your best and making it with love, I think the final product will look great regardless of which method you pick. And one really important tip for why you want to make sure to go with your cording. So it will look almost invisible if you're going the same grain as your cording. However, if you go opposite, you're going to see those little hash marks all around your piece. So really just make sure that you are going with the flow of the cording, going in the same direction and stitching with the same slant, because that is how you are going to get that nearly invisible look that everyone loves. Okay, so this one's actually going pretty quickly. I will say I've done quite a few of these today. I'm going out of town um, in a bit, although by the time you guys see this video I may have already come back, but I am trying to get these finished so that way I can send them off and they aren't going to have to wait for me to get back in town. Right now I've been taking on small, very, very small batches of finishing, um, mainly for friends or people I know quite well. I do hope one day to open up officially and kind of take on paid work, but for now I'm just doing it for friends to get some practice to make sure that you know, prior to opening anything officially that I am ensuring that anything I produce is of a really high quality because I wouldn't want to send anything out that I personally would not be happy with. But we are flying through this one, so that is really exciting. After this, I think I only actually have one more that I have to finish. Um, so I will be very excited to get their order out and not have it wait a few weeks for me to come home. And if you get your piece kind of stuck, you can always get a thing of pliers and pull your needle through as well. So sometimes I'll do that, especially if my hands are getting very tired or for some reason my needle stuck through a lot of canvas and it's difficult to pull through. I'll just get my handy dandy pliers and pull them straight through. I will say that finishing is incredibly hard on your hands. I have been meaning to go get my nails done, but honestly, you know, doing as much with my hands as I do, they're gonna break and chip and just look sad. So <laughs> part of me kind of wonders if it's just a waste of money going to get it done. But 
it is nice to feel like a lady and to have nice hands every once in a while. Okay. So we are almost done. So right here is where I ended the cording behind. So I wanted to have as seamless of a look as possible. So what I did was I started my cording in this corner, went all the way around and then where it kind of tucks in, I went in front. So that way you can't see it went up and then just tucked it in over here. So what I am actually going to do is kind of tuck this part in and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this knot off. So I don't like to cut the knot too early because if it's not squished in the cookie, then sometimes it can unravel. So I cut it and then I'm just gonna stuff it into my cookie and make sure that it is nice and tight. And I'm gonna put a pin right back here to keep it where I want for this. Ooh. So we don't wanna do that because you're probably gonna stab it and then get blood on your piece and that's really gross and no one wants that. So um, as you're putting pins in, just make sure that it is not somewhere that you will stab your fingers. I'm gonna put my clip back just to kind of pinch my boards together. And then I'm gonna keep moving forward. Okay. Also, I absolutely love it when you guys tag me uh, in all your progress. I love seeing the things that you've finished. I also like if you use one of my tutorials and maybe you know have some hiccups, let me know as well because that will definitely help me improve them. And if you're having a particular question or issue, I'm sure other people are too. Okay. And make sure to check out my Instagram. It is Nashville Needle Pointer uh, as well. I will say, YouTube videos are a little bit more involved for uploading. So typically what I will do if I have things that are shorter, those tend to go on my Instagram. So just make sure that you follow that as well to get the latest tutorials and videos. And then also um, just, you know, general DIY ideas and to kind of see what I'm stitching. Okay, so I'm out of thread. So what I'm going to do, I went out the back, straight out the front, and now I'm going back through the front and I'm just going to catch that little loop that I had made too. So it's just a simple knot. One little knot is all I do, and then I cut it off. Okay, so you're probably thinking, that's not a super strong knot. Um, and that could unravel at any point, which you are right. So what I'll do then to start a new thread is I'll, I'll actually go back a few stitches and do it again. If you're doing this correctly and going right in between the cording, it doesn't matter if you do even a stitch between each of these color changes, you're not gonna see any of them. So typically I'll start about three or four stitches before where I ended it, just so I can ensure that it is nice and tight all the way through. Okay, so I'm just using this 100% nylon invisible thread. Um, I know some people will use different kinds. Some people will use thread that's the same color as the stitching. Other people will use um, kind of whatever they've got around. I also know someone had mentioned using like floss because it's really strong uh, as well. I've never used floss. I typically just kind of stick with my invisible thread, but I think it could be really cool, you know, if you've got like a cording that's one color and you want some color alternating, uh, you could use your sewing thread to kind of add that pop of color as well. You just have to make sure that you're consistent with where you're going in and out of your cording to ensure that it kind of follows the same pattern, but I think it could be really cool. Okay, so I have my needle ready. It just went all the way through, double strand with a knot at the bottom. I'm gonna go through around where, a few stitches before where I ended. Pull it through, but not so tightly that the knot comes through. I'm gonna hold it, hold the knot there, and then I'm just going to start sewing again. Okay, go 
going right in where that knot I made was. Going over. So now we're getting closer to this edge. So I'm just gonna make sure to go through and not get this second piece of cording in the back. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pin out and now I'm just gonna get some like pliers or nails or just something sharp and kind of tuck this in exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna go through and just keep sewing my cording. Okay, so here is an instance where it's being a little tricky. So I'm just going to use my pliers. Going through it, making sure again, not to pick up any of that cording quite yet. Okay, so if you've been zoning out, this is where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention again. So I've sewn all the way around and now I'm back right here to where these two meet. So of course I wanna sew this in so it's nice and firm, although it is kind of in this piece living through there. So it is pretty tightly down here, but you know, if you pull too hard, it'll pull out. So what we're gonna do is just sew both cords. So I'm gonna go through the front and also through the cording the back piece. So I'm going under the front piece of cording through the back and then through the fabric. And that's just because we really want to make sure that the back piece is nice and secure. I'm going to take this pin out. And then from the back, I can see where this cording is. So I'm going to go through it and then through the cording. So this is an instance where you wouldn't want to go over the cording because we really want to make sure that it is secure. So I just went through both pieces out the front and then on my way back through, uh, sorry, I'm going to try and just go through it one more time and then get this back little piece of fabric. Okay. And then I am just going to pull it and now we can return to our regularly scheduled uh, over cording method. Okay. It's a little trickier now that I have this loop because I have to sew around it, um, making sure not to catch the loop, but that is all right. And I apologize if I'm out of frame sometimes. I am really focused on the piece and sometimes I forget exactly where the camera is, but I am trying my best. If you will just be patient with me uh, maybe one day I will figure it out. Okay. We're just going to keep doing this till we get to the other corner and then we will seal it off and be all done. I will say the sewing the cording on is definitely the slowest part. Um, I think that is going to be the main reason why there's so much flex in pricing between, you know, something that's like three inches or five inches, just because of how much more work you're going to have to do sewing on cording for a few more inches. I will also say like in general, there is a set amount of work that you're going to have to do regardless of the size. So I know sometimes people get upset because they might see a, you know, one inch ornament being charged the same as like a three inch. And 
honestly, that is because you still have to do the same amount of setup work regardless of how big it is. So you still have to make that custom design. You still have to, you know, custom cut out the boards and um, block all the canvases and custom cut out the fabric. And so there is a lot of kind of fixed work into it. So just because something's small, it doesn't mean that you can skip any of those steps. Really all it means is that you're gonna use less um, board, backing fabric, and cording. But at the end of the day, like those things are not huge differences in price. I would say the only thing that makes a difference is time saved with cording like just like sewing on the cording, but you know, in terms of time to make custom boards and time for cutting out shapes and the amount of like supplies you use in ornaments, I would say aren't very expensive to begin with. What, you know, typically you're paying for when you send it off is the labor because that is really the kicker and what takes far longer than it should okay we're so close though sorry if i seem a little kooky today this is like the fifth one i've done so i am exhausted my shoulder is cramping but i really did want to make sure to record it for you guys and after this i only have four more so you know Maybe I should start getting better at saying no, but I just am terrible at it and find myself overextended all the time. I'm sure you guys know what that's like. My favorite thing to do is overcommit to the point where I am stressing myself out for something that I absolutely don't even have to do. <laughs> sorry I'm just going off on a personal tangent but it's really awkward for me to be sitting here doing all this and if I just did it quietly I would feel really weird knowing that you guys are watching so forgive me for being very talkative today okay so we are at this corner and I don't love how much thread I have, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and tie this off and get a new thread to start because I would like to not be confined for finishing this corner just because of how tricky it is. Okay, so made a knot, going back through it, just tying it off. Also, the backing fabric that the person picked for this is so cute. I think it matches the golf cart so well. So I start, so I'm just gonna, again, start back a few stitches just to make sure that it's going to be in there nice and tight. Okay, and honestly, this is what I should have done from the get-go to keep this out of my way. But that would require planning, which I don't do. Okay. So going back through. I find corners on squares can be kind of difficult because I have a lot of canvas kind of bent in that area. I don't like to cut my canvases in the corners because then you get like frayed edges. So honestly, for a lot of them, I just like will fold the canvas a lot of times. But then it makes your corners kind of thick. 
and a little bit harder to work with, but for me, there's only four corners and I'm willing to deal with it for a short amount of time versus having, you know, my corners kind of frayed and not look good. Okay. And so then what I'm gonna do now is just make sure that all my cording is where I want it to be. So this back one is mostly sewn in. I'm just gonna tuck this guy right in here a little bit more. So that way we have a nice straight corner and I'm gonna keep this guy going up straight. And so now, because we are at this corner, I'm going to go Actually, it does not look like we're right there yet. So I think this is the last stitch I'm going to make that Doesn't have both of them And then now I'm going to go through the back cording. As well as put this cording where I want it. And I'm going to go through that again, just trying to go between the two colors so you don't have a weird snag. Okay. And this side I'm not worried as much about because this is tucked in but we're not going to be pulling it so for this side I was really worried about making sure it's nice and tight but because you know this side if you pull it it's just going to pull all the way around I'm not concerned about it unraveling okay I'm gonna go through the back cording and the fabric and just pull nice and tight and take this pin out. I don't like to leave the pins in there too long because it can kind of like warp your cording. So you took it out. And actually what I'm going to do is twist this to how I want it and then add a new pin kind of out of my way. Just holding the cording there for a second while I go and sew this in. So for this section, this is around where we started. So we are just going to go and finish this up. So to do that, we'll go over and I'm basically just going to keep doing this until we get to the point where we started the cording initially and then I'll probably do it a few more, whoops stitches through there just to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, making sure I don't end up with any accidental knots, which looks like this could be if I pull too tight. Okay. I keep oh my goodness, catching everything. Okay, so now I've gone past where I started my cording. So again, this is just to make it nice and tight. And remember how it was kind of loose up here? Clearly it's not anymore because I went through and added a few more stitches. So this is gonna be my last stitch. I'm just gonna go straight through, under the cording through the back, pulling tight, opening that, making sure everything is how I want it. So I don't love, I don't know if you guys can see, this guy's kind of sticking out a little bit more than I would like. But that is an easy fix. I'm just gonna use some pliers and kind of tuck him in, in the back a little bit more. And there we go, nice and flush. Okay, so in the back, we're just going to go through the fabric straight ahead, 
making a really big loop and then I'm going to come back through and just stick my needle through that loop that I've made and pull it through and then snip it. And again, we only really need one knot because it's sewing over what's already been sewn, so it's not likely to come undone. So I'm just gonna make a knot for this so I can use this thread later. Okay, and then what I'll typically do is just take my scissors and cut off all the little tails from my thread. Just be really careful not to cut the needle point or anything that you've stitched. Okay, and here we go. We are all done. So if you have any questions, link them below. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already at Nashville Needle Pointer. Hope you guys enjoyed it.